your trip to Washington, Ms. Bridgeforth, uh, can you recount uh, the experiences you had there and what it meant to you personally? Yes, we left Memphis at 9.20, arrived in Charlotte, North Carolina, transferred to U.S. Airways, and we arrived in Washington, D.C. around 2.20. Checked into the hotel and redressed, and we had an appointment for an interview at uh, 4 o'clock, another interview at 5, another interview at 6, a tour of the Capitol at 6.30 to 7. And from there, we went to the Capitol up in the uh, balcony where I was seated for the president's address about 8 o'clock, 8.15, something like that. Ms. Kircher, what did it mean to see the president, an African-American, walk into the the House chamber there and address Congress as an African American. What what did that mean to you personally? It meant a dream fulfilled. It was a dream fulfilled. It was a. I was like a grandmother, a great grandmother. I was so proud of him, and uh, he is an eloquent speaker. He has words at his command. And I just felt happy. I, it was just a dream come true. I wanted to pinch myself to see if I was really there. Because it was really a, I just, words don't, can't describe how I felt. I was so elated. I had my ticket to this State of the Union message in my hand. And I held it up for the whole time I was there. I, I wouldn't turn my ticket loose because that was what I was closest to. I had a ticket and I was, had, I was in place right there in the balcony. We, we talked about your father, Frazier Guy, and how he made, uh, really paved the way for African Americans to not only run for office but vote. Mm -hmm. Take us back, if you will, to the 1950s, the 1960s, when African Americans were discouraged from voting. Oh yes, when, in the 1950s and 60s, when Dad and I would go around in the Soda County getting people to vote, we went to churches, we went to the black churches, and that's where we would get people to register and he would take the material, the voting, to the courthouse the next day. But it was, it was a really a good feeling because Dad was so interested in getting African Americans to vote. And uh, we wasn't afraid. We didn't think one time about what we were doing. Only, our only goal was to get African Americans to vote. And so when I went to Washington to see the president on the first African American to be elected president and then the first African American to speak in the House of Representatives, it was a great feeling. And I felt like that my father was very pleased with me being, being there, me sitting there. This is Black History Month. What lessons does Black History Month have for not only black Americans, uh, but Americans in general? What we what it has for Americans in general, it emphasizes the struggle that we have gone through. Not only African Americans went through struggles, but Caucasians or white, they struggled. They lost their lives. Some of them lost their lives for the cause, for to try to get African Americans to vote in Mississippi especially. And it it means that their work 
wasn't in vain. And those who died in the, for the cause, they did not die in vain. It took a long time, but it finally came that we have an African-American man who is well qualified, who is, he speaks eloquent, he is, has words at his command, and we don't want to forget the struggle that brought him this far. The reason he's there is because of so many unknown people have died and struggled and worked hard to get us where we are today. And we've been having a conversation with Ms. Gertrude Bridgeforth. Ms. Bridgeforth, thank you very much. Thank you.